I want to share with you from Deuteronomy chapter 12, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 20 onwards. So when the Lord your God enlarges your territory as he has promised you, and you say, I will eat meat because you crave meat, you may eat meat whenever you desire, all right? 21, if the place that the Lord your God would choose to put his name that is far from you, all this, you know, all this stuff, okay? Verse 23, only be sure you don't eat the blood, for the blood is in the life. You shall not eat the life with the flesh. You shall, you shall pour it out, etc. Verse 26, but the holy things are due from you, and your vow offerings shall take and shall go to the place the Lord will choose. Verse 27, Okay, and you offer your burnt offering, the flesh and the blood on the altar of your God. The blood of the sacrifices shall be poured out on the altar of the Lord, your God, but the flesh you may eat. All these uh, details of the Old Testament offerings and requirements. But I want you to take notice of verse 28. But it says, be careful. The Lord God, God says this. Be careful to obey all these words that I command you, that it may go well with you and with your children after you forever. When you do what is good and right in the sight of the Lord your God. Wow, this is big. Deuteronomy 12, 28, okay? So I want you to notice that God promised, if you do what I say, and uh, I will make sure you and your children will be all all be well taken care of, all right? This is a huge promise. In other words, if you don't, you may not, you know, you may not be well taken care of. I don't know. You know, this is the, the promise of the Word of God. Be careful to obey all these words that command you may go well with you. And you children, what are the words that God commanded you? In this case, it's, you know, it's the Old Testament, the New Covenant. Uh, like, you may not eat of the blood, uh, you may you should make your offerings to the in the go to the place where the Lord choose and you offer your burnt offerings and all this stuff. And he says here that um in fact it is really revealing. It says here that um you should that your that you and your children, if you obey all these words I command you, you may go well with you and with your children after you forever. When you do what is right, what is good and right in the sight of the Lord your God. In other words, God watches over you. God watches over all of us. I know there is a tension about you. You see, these kind of words may mislead people. That, oh, I want to go to do well with my life. I want my children to do well after me forever you know, then I should do good and right in the sight of the Lord your God, uh, of the Lord our God. Basically, it's to please God. You know, in, in the idolatry worship, this is what the God, this, uh, what do you call this? To appease God. You keep off sacrificing. But the Lord our God, if you read this on its own, it may be seeming like what makes people misunderstand the gospel the redemption gospel is trying to do this on your own, becomes a religion. All right, because now we are under the new covenant. This Jesus has made the redemption for each one of us. And we can, you know, we can follow all this stuff. In fact, I mean, we don't go to the specific place to offer our sacrifices. A lot of that are no more applicable, but it's been fulfilled in different way because Jesus is the temple. All right, but we can take this, however we can take that. If we obey the Lord our God, it may go well with us and our children forever. Now, this go well, you know, is somewhat, is again confusing. Because in the, in the, new, in the new covenant, in the gospels, a lot of times, even Paul asks us to share sufferings with Christ. So I will argue that go well with, so that we obey the word of Christ, or obey the word of God in from the Bible, they may go well with us and our children when we do right, good, and right in the sight of God. 
does not necessarily exclude any sufferings in times of persecutions because of the spiritual warfare we're in. So this doing good, go well, means go well that we may be able to wage a spiritual warfare. Wow, this is new to me. <laughs> Do you agree with that? I would say so. Because if you read that and try to do, try to interpret it, to exegete it directly, you cannot reconcile half of the Psalms is, is lament. Why the guy like Job has to lament so badly? It was a test in his life. Did his life go well? Horrible. Nothing went well. But in the end, it went really well. You know, and Jesus talked about the kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. You know, that a lot of people sacrificed on earth, but their faith keeps them going because they see what is coming ahead of us. And that is to me is actually what it means to go well with you and your children. I won't be able to cover all this in a short period of time here, but I'm just arguing for the fact that Verses like this in the Old Testament can be very confusing. It may go well with you. To define that go well with you and with your children means you actually fight the journey, fight, the, fight a good fight, run a good race for the Lord. Go well does not necessarily mean you have a nice house and you know have a good education, good job or not. Though they are important. But this, that, that will not be the overall definition of what means to, 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 go, to, to, uh, to go to be well with you and your children after you forever. And interestingly, it says forever. How can you be forever? Because you don't know your children or your, your future grandchildren and great-grandchildren, how they're going to behave. David, the greatest king of Israel, one generation, his son already screwed up, completely left the Lord. Two generations later, it's gone worse. And third generation, fourth generation, some generation got become better as, again, you know, until he hit the Lord Jesus Christ. My point is that this forever can only be realistic, can become real in and through the son of David, our Lord Jesus Christ, the son of God, hallelujah, himself. And uh, the other thing I would say that it, it often it's you notice that how God always put it like for, it may go well with you and your children, you and your children, you and your children. God is very family focused. God is very family centered to say that you don't look after your children. You don't have any expectation of your children. You don't have any pray a burden and cry out to God for your children. It's not biblical. You know, as parents, we must cry out to God. If our children have walked off the way from the Lord, we're going to cry out to the Lord. Like, uh, what's the name? Samuel's mother. What's the name? Can't remember. And she, she was, um, she couldn't conceive, right? She cried out to the Lord again and again until the Lord gave her Samuel. She swore, she, she made a vow to the Lord she will give uh, the son, which is Samuel, unto the Lord holy. And the Lord, gave, the Lord gave her more children after that. She was overjoyed. You know, children is almost like everything in life in the Old Testament. And it's pretty much almost everything in the Asian culture. <laughs> you know, I sometimes I do find Asian culture and African culture closer to the... Uh, to the Middle Eastern culture, which is, which is the Lord Jesus culture at, at the time in the Bible. But that's, that's beside the point. The point is that God really wants us to look after our children. Okay. God wants our children to do well. And therefore, all parents should think about the welfare of, 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 of our children after us. And then make sure we do, we, we obey all the words that the Lord has commanded. I, last one I give to you, Matthew 20, 18, 20. This is the New Testament. This is from the Lord Jesus himself. Uh, go and make disciples of all nations and teach them everything I've taught you. 
to obey everything, obey everything. That's exactly what it says here, to obey. To obey, to obey everything I taught you. Uh, lo, behold, I'm with you to the end of end of a end of the time. Okay. So, so this is clearly, clearly the uh, the case of uh, God wanting to us to know that He is calling us for big things, to to uh, to make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe, to obey. You know, petition them to obey everything I've commanded you. Behold, I'm with you to the end of the age. What is the reward of obedience to the end of the age? This is exactly what um, what, what uh, uh, we read just now, Deuteronomy 28. It shall be, be well with you and your children. Hallelujah. Amen.